Hey everybody, Fetty here, and I'm off on a new project, probably my most ambitious project of the year, but I'm getting ready to build a pole barn or a pole garage. I had an old barn next to the house here, and I had to tear it down last year because it was falling in, and my poor little old tractor had to spend all last winter and all of this summer outside, and it kind of broke my heart seeing her sit out there and suffer like that. So I'm going to try to get back on better terms with Mrs. Kubota and build her something that she can get up underneath this winter when it's cold and snowing outside. Now, it's not going to be anything special about this barn. Uh, it's going to be about 32 feet wide, maybe 20, 24 feet deep. I'm going to have three bays in it. That way I can pull my tractor in one bay, maybe keep my implements or something like that in another, um, and have another bay to keep my work van. I don't know. It should provide a lot of space to keep some things dry that I want out of the weather. So I'm pretty excited about that. Now I'm going to tell you this project's going to suck. And the reason is because it's starting to get cold outside and I don't handle the cold real well. It's starting to get dark early. Um, I don't have any power down there in the field and I don't have any water down there. So I'm going to be running back and forth probably, you know, mixing up concrete and I don't know, cutting and all that kind of stuff. So there's nothing going to be easy about it, but is there anything ever easy about these projects? It's just, you know, it'll make it be something to be that much more proud of because you had to work hard to do it. Now, if I had my preference, I'd pour a slab and frame off that slab. I understand, you know, I understand framing a little bit better that way, but I don't really have the money to pour a slab, so I'm just going to put some sticks in the ground and, uh, build it that way. Now this is going to be a multi-part uh, video that will probably span the next few months. Because it is getting cold and starting to become winter, my goal right now is to get the sticks in the ground, get it banded, and get a roof over it. Um, if I can get that much done, I'll be tickled to death. That way I can get, get my tractor in the dry and uh, come back next spring and go ahead and close it in. So. Worst case scenario, that's what I have to get done in the next few weeks. So multi-part video and what I'm going to try to do is kind of take, uh, take it in, in little, little chunks along the way and hopefully give you some tips and tricks along the way, maybe inspire you a little bit or give you the confidence to try it on your own or give you some of your own ideas. The first part in this video, what I'm going to try to do is kind of take the mystery out of getting a site prepared to build on and take the mystery out of squaring up the building because man that's the most important part you blow that part and it's just not going to be good the rest of the time so i've got my stakes cut out got my string got my tape measures and uh, i think we just need to go down the field and get started on this thing okay so i've been down here playing with it a little bit and hammering some stakes in the ground and kind of getting an idea how this is all going to look you see my tractor there that's the biggest thing i got to make sure that i can get my tractor backed in with the loader on it and i also have a wood chipper and it's about six foot long so i want to be able to back it all in and have enough room so i'm going to make this 24 feet deep and 32 feet long now the first thing i got to do is establish a side and i'm going to establish the front the way that i'm going to do that two things first in the back back here, there's some drainage issues back there. So I know that I need to come off that bank a little bit. So I found a place, found a point back here that I'm comfortable that that would be safe to be my furthest most edge of this building without you know having water and all that kind of stuff. So once I did that, I measured out 24 feet. And I put this stake in the ground right here. At this point, I'm not being real scientific. I'm just roughing it out. Now I've got to establish the front. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to square it off that yard barn down there. Doesn't really matter what you reference off of, you just got to have something to reference. And since that yard barn's down there, that's what I'm going to square it off of. So what I did was I pulled a string from that stake right here, plumbed down to the end of that building, to that yard barn. And I kind of eyeball it up a little bit and I run a stake in there and I keep playing with it. And what I'm trying to do is measure the distance from the yard barn to the string. 
and I measured it off the back of the yard barn and then off the front of the yard barn. I kept playing with it and eventually I got within an eighth of an inch. So the back of the yard barn is I think 75 inches to the string. The front is 75 and an eighth to the string. So at this point I'm square with that yard barn so now what I'm going to do is measure down 32 feet. I have a, a stake down there right now, but it's not real exact. So I'm going to try to be precise, measure down 32 feet, run a stake in, and I have my front established. At that point, I can start putting up some batter boards, and that way I can start finding my other sides. I don't know if this is the way the Egyptians did it. It's the way I'm doing it. It always works out pretty good. So let's keep moving. Okay, so I've already made up some batter boards here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting them in at the corners of these stakes. Okay, I got my batter boards on the front put together and they're hammered in the ground. Now it's time to go ahead and find the legs of this building and get it squared up. There's a lot of different ways to square a building, everything from using a multi-thousand dollar piece of precision equipment to doing it the, the homemade jacked up way, which I've seen where people try to lay a framing square on your string line. I don't have a lot of confidence in doing it that way uh, and I don't have a multi-thousand dollar piece of precision equipment. The key to finding square on a building is the diagonal. And what I mean by that is in any square, the distance from one opposing corner to the other is the same. So that distance is the same as that distance. And that diagonal holds the key to being able to square this building up. And that's what we'll use to double check and make sure that we're really good in square. Now, Let's don't worry about the lengths of the legs. Let's find out what that diagonal is. And to do that, we're gonna to have to use the M word, the math. Ooh, but don't panic, it's redneck math that even I can, I can comprehend. Like a million years ago, some dude came up with like a law of the universe. I think his name was Pythagoras. And he said that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, we know that a squared is 24 and B squared is 32 and C squared is a big question mark. When you work that math out, you come up to 1600 and the square root of 1600 is 40. So 40 feet is the distance on this building from one corner to the other corner. Now, what we're gonna do to find that, I got my boy Cole out here and he's gonna help me. We're gonna run two tapes. He's gonna string one out to 24 feet. I'm gonna string one out to 40 feet. And we're gonna start walking those two together. And when them two numbers cross, that's our corner. I can run a, a stake in and we have a pretty doggone perfect square at that point. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you how. So right there we're 40 and 24 cross. That's our corner. And I'll just come in here, run me a stake in this corner, right there at that intersection. Right there. And we'll be we'll be square as we can be.
All right, at this point, we're really close. Cole's double checking our measurements. We're not dialed in precision, but we're really close. Now what we'll do next with the use of the batter boards, we'll dial this thing in perfect and we'll be perfectly square and we'll be able to set the rest of our pins for where our posts are gonna go in. Now then what we're gonna do is pull a string line from one batter board across our stakes to the other batter board. When we get it lined up, and we'll just kinda of eyeball it in at first. We'll put a nail in the batter board, wrap a string around it, tie it off. Then we'll use that to kind of dial this thing in. The great thing about this is we can take that string down later if we need to get the tractor in here or something like that. And we always know those reference points and then we can just put our string back up. So let's do that. Okay, so we pulled us string lines all the way around the perimeter of this, this layout. And as you pull it, you just kind of have to eyeball it over the top of your stake. Come to the back and put a nail in, wrap it up, you know, go down there and check, you know, do the same thing over here, check, you know, and eventually you'll dial it in. You'll be a little bit off and then you just move that nail. Put it, you know, like right there, I had to move that nail over a little bit. At this point, we're really, really square. But what I can do just for extra measure, I can come right here and measure my diagonals again. So I'll just shoot over there, measure my diagonals. And if my diagonals are, are 40, then uh, this thing is perfectly square at that point. From there, I can start measuring off to where I'm gonna lay my posts out. And I'll just measure it off. And when I get to the first layout for the post, I'll take a Sharpie and mark it, just put a stake in. And we're almost ready to start digging holes. Now what I'm going to do is go all the way around. I know where my posts are going to lay out. I've got Cole holding the measure in the corner. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to find this one's going to be on 8 foot. And I'm just going to mark that string right there at 8 foot. So I can keep up with it. I'll come back in. Line a post up. Maybe tap a little post in the ground a little bit. Then I'll shoot it with some of that, that marking paint. And I'll know exactly where to dig. Now somebody out there is going to tell me I'm going about this all backwards and you're kind of right. Ideally, under perfect circumstances, you'd come in here and grade everything out, have it perfectly level before you start laying it out and digging holes. But I'm not going to do that. I'm pretty level as it is. Got the laser out and I found my high corners. That, that end over there is the high side. And I'm pretty good about 20 feet in then I start falling off. When I get to this corner down here, I'm about... About seven inches low right here. See? About seven inches. And over on that corner, I'm about five inches. I'm not at all bothered by that because I'll come in here next spring and level this up. There's going to be a bed of gravel on it anyway. And, and I'll bring in four or five inches of fill and then put some gravel on it. And it'll be fine. The only thing that I'm really concerned about when I dig these holes I'm going to put a bed of concrete in the bottom of each of these holes. Two or three inches probably up there, and down here it'll be a little bit more. The only thing I'm concerned about is the top of that concrete is on the same plane all the way around. Now what'll happen is these posts up here, there'll be more posts in the ground up, up there. Uh, down here, there'll be less posts in the ground. But all I care about is that concrete in the bed of that hole that they're all on the same plane and I'll use this laser right here to make sure I'm dialed in. That way I know when I do come in here and level this thing up there'll be the same amount of pole sticking out of the ground all the way around. So that's how I'm tackling this and uh, I think it'll be fine. Okay I got everything all laid out and I'm ready to start digging some holes but for now I'm in a good place where I can stop for the day and this is a good place to stop part one of this video series. Stay tuned for the rest of this saga of building a pole barn. Uh, they'll be coming up in future videos. Hope you enjoyed the video, maybe learned something, learned how to lay out a building, and uh, hope you got something out of it. As always, if you like my videos, remember to give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.